the China syndrome. What's happening in China as the economy of China collapses and the world economy reacts? Let's take a look. China's central bank is fighting waves of cash flowing out of the country. This has been happening for some time, though. I reported on this uh, several years back that uh, the wealthy in China uh, will do anything that they can to get money outside of China. And they do so in many different ways, one of them being real estate abroad, which we're seeing in some markets in the United States, especially in New York. Uh, the Chinese are essentially buying up Manhattan and other uh, high-valued properties throughout the United States, one way of getting money outside of China. How do you hold a wave upon the sand? Central bankers in China would like to know as they increase stimulus, issue another round of stimulus here in reaction to the pounding of their Shanghai index and China's benchmark one-year lending rate plummets here. We can see back in 2008 we were at 7.5% and that's gone south. So cheap money is in in China. And as I've been saying for several years, uh, the debt in China has racked up faster and larger than any other culture on earth throughout history. The rapid rise of Chinese municipal debt is a huge concern. There's a chart there of foreign debt outstanding. It's plunged, but let's take a look here at uh, what's happening in their capital flight situation. It's a self-reinforcing impulse. Once some investors start selling the yuan, the herd follows. Even worse is what happens when officials try to counteract the trend. When the People's Bank of China sells its dollars, it siphons the yuan it receives out of the financial system forever, sucking up liquidity in the process, leaving banks less cash to lend. It also drives down prices, creating deflationary pressure, and so on and so on as real estate rates continue to rise. Bad news for a country that's already racked up $28 trillion equivalent in debt. Yes, indeed, those bridges to nowhere and those ghost cities tend to have a way of coming back at you, back to the future, on the books. You can only hide debt so long, and we're finding out quickly here that the Chinese government is not all-powerful and does not have an answer for everything. Everything you have heard, though, about China's stock market crash is wrong, and you're hearing a lot of it out there, the talking heads, uh, politicians uh, campaigning uh, for their nomination in respective parties, talking about China, the China syndrome, blame China for this, blame China for that, all of our problems in the West based on China, nothing could be further from the truth. The stock market implosion is um, widely viewed as a reaction to the Chinese government's devaluing uh, the yuan, but that's not everything in a nutshell. Uh, basically, people were waiting for a stimulus, a new round of stimulus from the Chinese government to cover all of these bogus bonds that they've been issuing throughout the years. And when they didn't, uh, when anticipated, what happened, we had Black Monday. And when they announced a rate cut and they announced more stimulus here on August 25th, what happened is the markets recovered. And they recovered uh, still uh, today into trading. So foreign exchange reserves up to 2014, we can see it dipping there. It's dipping lower. Uh, they have been getting rid of their foreign securities. Now... You may not know this, but over the past three months, China has been unloading U.S. debt uh, to the tune of uh, about $200 billion. So the last three months, take a look at the numbers. You can dig them up uh, online. If you search uh, long enough, you'll find them. Uh, they've been dumping uh, treasuries. They've been dumping them quicker than at any other time. This leads people to believe that there is going to be a new round of financial warfare, currency wars, and other types of tomfoolery coming down the pike as uh, uh, China is trying to 
put hold on their collapse and they're do, going to do anything that they can do to make sure that uh, it doesn't uh, have a hard collapse like so many people have predicted. China's surge in money supply M2, we can see here that it is going nothing but straight up and that means bad news for the average Chinese as they can see some consumer prices going out of control. Um, I've shown you before, you go to the local supermarket here and you'll see that uh, prices are approaching and in some cases surpassing the same price in the West. Why is it that you can go out in the market in China and buy a Chinese made good manufactured in China and pay as much or more in some cases than it is in the United States after it's been shipped halfway across the world? This is the fantasy land. This is the twilight zone when it comes to fi Chinese finance and economics. Um, it doesn't make sense, but it is happening and unfolding right be before us and this is going to be a great case study for anybody out there that is going to do a uh, paper uh, for their graduate studies on uh, world economy it's going to be quite exciting uh, for economists to look back on this time period and talk about it uh, endlessly China's benchmark, benchmark Shanghai composite index dipping uh, recovering a bit here over the past couple days but the trend is certainly down. Um, hot money fleeing the country. This has been happening, like I said, for years now um, and going to continue to happen uh, until they seriously put the brakes on. Uh, average change in selling prices for Chinese producers. Look at that. Dipping. Dipping to levels unseen in many, many years. So... Uh, Historically, this horrific stock market crash, historically in one chart, if you look at it, uh, it'll show you reaching new lows. And this is something that's been unseen for, well, basically in a lifetime. Uh, since China has had modern markets and since they, they've uh, tried to integrate themselves in the world economy. This has never happened to them. Black Monday adds concerns about the health of China's economy. Obviously, uh, when we see uh, these numbers coming in and we see that the Chinese government is going to continue to print money out of control, just like their counterparts in the West, um, one thing's for sure that for the average player, the average person, the working person in the East or the West, your only move really is to save money and save it in precious metals. Keep some cash on hand for bills that you're going to have within the next three to six months, if possible. But anything else that you're going to do as far as speculating in real estate or equities or securities, you're in a losing game. Okay, And if you're a retiree, uh, you've got bigger problems to worry about than that even. And I'll get into that in some later videos. But China, to step up financial leasing to bolster economy, what they're going to do is they're going to try to backstop some of these bad bonds by offering cash to these municipalities and other state-run companies for their bonds outstanding in order to prop up a potential bond collapse, which has been in the cards for years. Uh, nothing has really changed from my earlier predictions uh, going back a couple years on this channel. It's just coming more to fruition now than it has been. U.S. charges six Chinese citizens with economic espionage. Okay, this is part of the China syndrome I've been talking about. Blame China for your problems. Blame China for jobs going abroad. Donald Trump running his mouth. Uh, over this past week or so, blaming China at every turn, people eating it up and taking it as fact, but nothing could be further from the truth. If you want to blame somebody, blame yourself. Blame your politicians. Blame your multinational corporations who have offered jobs to Chinese, who have given them the technology, have given them the tax breaks, the free trade agreements that are screwing the Western populations, okay? They aren't taking jobs from the West. They're being given jobs from the West. They're being, being given sweetheart deals. I know. Uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of people. I see it all the time. 
I've been in companies that are Chinese owned, that are co op between Chinese and American ownership, European ownership, or companies that are completely owned by the West here in China. So I know what's going on there. Um, they're basically given uh, the benefit of the Dow. They're given advantages that they won't even give to their own domestic markets back home. That is why we are in the state that we're in. You only have to look in the mirror and blame yourselves. So as Trump keeps talking about how bad China is, he never really goes as far to say what is the root of the real problems and what are the solutions. In detail, what are the solutions, okay? Um, if you think that there's going to be any change um, by electing either a Republican or a Democrat in the White House, um, you've got another thing coming because this um, recession, deep recession, possible depression, is baked into the cake. Okay, The problems are too deep and too severe for anyone to come in and be able to promise any significant changes. China expands debt for bond swap to 3.2 trillion yuan. This is what I was talking about. Uh, they're trying to backstop their bad uh, bonds and trying to prop up their economy as much as possible. And uh, basically, it will not work. It will only delay the inevitable. It will help to bolster uh, markets uh, around the world and create some kind of phony confidence in the Chinese economy. But uh, things couldn't be worse. It's worse than you think. Whatever you might think, it's worse. You're right on the money, my friend. Um, even though I don't agree with everything that some of these talking heads uh, say, or economists for that matter, who can't agree on anything, they are right about one thing. Uh, the Chinese economy is bad. Western economies are bad. And it's going to take a debt jubilee or a repegging of the currencies worldwide and new trade agreements, fair trade agreements, to make this thing get back on track. And until we get that, we're not going to go anywhere. So hunker down. This could be a long-going downturn in the world economies. Uh, we're talking several years here, okay? It's a slow burn. This is not going to be one event that's going to be a collapse here in the fall. It's going to be, I believe, a multiple of uh, many type flash collapses that are going to leave us weaker and weaker over time. So expect the worst and hope for the best. That's about all I can give you for advice.